it's my favorite place. Being in the water, it makes me feel free. If you've got stress, the water can make you feel better. Catching wave, it gives you something strong. The next day, there's something big is gonna happen. Your dreams are gonna come true. For 19-year-old Nonedo Mabunu, every day is a mission to stay positive. I'm a strong woman, and I'm glad that I'm a strong woman because I don't give up easy in a lot of things. Her love of surfing helps to guide her through. The township of Massey Pumaleli is full of dangers and disappointments. We've got gangsterism, drugs, alcohol abuse, teenage pregnancy. This is one of the most violent and impoverished districts in South Africa. That's why for Nonedo, surfing is such a precious escape. For me, this is freedom. It, it gives me more hope than I ever had before. the ocean meets the mountains of the Cape. Musenberg is a magnet for surfers young and old. Here, the face of South African surfing is being transformed. The waves of change are rolling in. These days, Musenberg is a fantastic example of how the racial divisions are disappearing on the beaches in South Africa. Everyone is welcome here. Black South Africans who have lived along the coast for generations are now taking to the water. Surfing is changing the complexion of the beach and the lives of young people. As a black person, you wanna you wanna do a lot of things. You you, you when you see, you see something great, you wanna go and try it. kids are part of a pioneering surfing program called Waves for Change. Every afternoon they leave the troubles of the township behind. They're on their way to the beach and a few hours of freedom. When I'm driving down with the kids singing, it's, it feels great, like, you know, we're happy, we're not worried about what's happening in a community. for Change was established in 2011. The program targets kids from the poorest parts of the Cape Flats. It not only teaches them to surf, but how to deal with life. It needs patience from people who are adults to work with them and to show them that there's so many ways in life, not just going the wrong way. Apish Checha is one of the surf coaches. He was the first young person from the townships to become involved in Waves for Change. Surfing has made me wise and stick to my values and to have principles for myself. Without this program, few of these kids could afford to surf. Everything is donated from the bus to the boards and the wetsuits. Let's give a fun and mad a This is not just a surfing program, it's all about making a connection with the kids. Sisonge! Simunye! Simunye! Sisonge! We call it to check up and then just to explore how they're feeling 
We just want to work with them, knowing how are they feeling at that moment. <laughs> After the checkup, the surfing begins. It's a big release for kids who have more energy than they know what to do with, and for those who are carrying worries and stress. Waves for Change was founded by a visiting English surfer, Tim Conabare. He met a pish during a visit to the township and started introducing the local kids to surfing. Yeah, it grew from, what, 2011 it was a pish and me and five kids in a car and now it's, yeah, it's big actually. It's across three townships in Cape Town. Uh, we reach about 250 kids a week and it employs, I think we've got 20 coaches on the books at the moment. This is the core of anything that we do, it's making sure the local community can run it. I can't do anything to, to change, you know, Masabu Malele or anything like that, but and Monledo, Apish, and the other guys that they work with, they, you know, they understand that they've got this kind of social capital with the kids, they can navigate the community. They know where it's going, they know where it's been. This place has a long history of haves and have-nots. Back in the 1960s, Musenberg was the hub of South Africa's surf scene, but not everyone was welcome. Most of the white beaches, were designated white beaches, were where the better waves were. So of course the lure of going to surf good waves was, was there for many of the black surfers, specifically around here in, in the Western Cape. Dr Glenn Thompson is a surf historian. He's written extensively about the changing tides of politics on South Africa's beaches. Many black surfers, they pushed that envelope the whole time. You know, they, they crossed the line, they you know, took the moments, they, they made it happen. White sand was reserved for white feet. The system known as apartheid segregated almost every aspect of daily life by race. Black surfers could be beaten or arrested for disobeying the law. Special police were deployed to round them up. Apartheid is long gone, but undoing its legacy is a gradual process. Ways for Change is, is part of that groundswell of change at the beach. Uh, the, the fact that an NGO has taken on surfing um, as, a, as a means of doing social change and social transformation for black youth is an indication of how far surfing has actually come. Cape Town is still one of the most racially segregated cities in South Africa. Many of the wealthy live on one side of the mountain, the poor on the other. Yeah. Uh. Okay. What? Uh. I remember way back in the days it was cool to rock shell tools, candles and braids. They said that it would never happen again, but here we are in the flesh, nigga, dance in the rain. A young buck raised out of the kid flat, hustle for paychecks, cause we all gotta make rent. I think there is freedom, but in an economic way, there is no freedom. We are best black people, we are still struggling with, with financial problems. Our parents can't, they are working, but they are earning uh, small wages. They can't take us to further education because there is freedom. Now we can play sport that white people can play. We can do anything that white people can do. But then in economic, we can't. Do the people get frustrated? A lot, because mm. without a job, you've got kids living in a shack. You go crazy. Yo, you go crazy. Yeah. 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 So you can't do anything.
More than 30,000 people live here in the township of Masi Pumaleli. But there are few basic services, not even a police station. That means that kids are growing up in an environment where violence and trauma are widespread. It kills them. It doesn't give them any hope, nothing at all. You only are traumatised, you have a lot of anger issues, you can't control yourself, you're being rude to other people, you're selfish. Beneath the surface, Nonledo knows just how painful trauma can be. Three years ago, she was raped by a family friend. I was shocked. I was out of my mind. I couldn't concentrate at school. I wanted to tell someone, but I couldn't talk to anyone about it. I kept it for a long time. And then I started telling my mom after a month that um, this had happened. Nonledo shut herself away. She dropped out of the Waves for Change program and started failing at school. I felt ashamed a lot. I felt like a dirty person, that I, I can't even wash myself anymore. I felt like there's no moving forward. And I thought that God has cursed my life, has cursed everything that's happening to my family, especially me. This is the problem. Like, we, you know, we were trying to refer her for support and we didn't really know where we could send her when something like this happens. And non Ledo story is by no means unique, unfortunately. It's, it is really difficult. One of the first steps was to get her back in the water and back in the program. It was a rough start, but it worked. When I went back to surfing, it was not the same. I, that's what I told Tim, I was like catching waves. I always get angry when I'm catching a wave and I'm not catching it nicely. I'll beat the surfboard, like, no, 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 not like this, do this. So it was not easy just to get through all of that. It took time for me to get used to it that I'm coming back now and everything, it's like I'm starting over again. So you're trying to think, well, you know, what can we do? And it's just a surfing program. What's the, what's the, what's the depth that we can go to? And you do, you get really concerned, but obviously the presence of, of some caring adults at that really difficult time, it's a very small kind of part of a much bigger picture of what she went through, but I'm very happy that she's found something through surfing and the rest of the community that's, that's helped her. You know, we'd experienced probably four really unfortunate events in our lifetime, so the death of, death of a loved one or something like that. Um, in the townships here, we've, you know, we've worked out it's anything from eight events to 16 events every year that these kids go through. In some parts of the Cape Flats, almost half of the children have witnessed a stabbing. A third have witnessed a shooting, and many others have been threatened with a weapon. It puts them in a state of kind of hypervigilance, and it really affects the way they behave. So they're you know, constantly alert to what's going on. Um, they're very desensitised to violence, and it's very difficult to regulate your emotions as well. So there's a lot of anger that comes out, and kids behave very spontaneously. That's why the surf coaches visit local schools every week. They work with the teachers to monitor the behaviour of kids who might be struggling. We talk to the teachers of those kids who are involved in the programme. We also go to school, give feedback to the principal and the teachers. So it's a great connection because we get to hear different stories from different people about the kids. 11-year-old Liko has only been with the program for a few months, but he's already full of determination. Even in the water, he's pushing himself to be the best surfer that he can be, because you've seen me surfing and then you'll be like, I want to surf better than you. Liko is on his way home from school with some exciting news. He's been chosen to compete in a special township surfing competition next weekend. I chose him because he's committed, he has respect. I mean, 
he challenges himself. He's just a nice kid though, he deserves the chance. Are you excited for Liko? Yeah, massively. That's awesome, you know, if you think, if you just look at where he comes from, you look at his environment and you think, well, look, you're gonna be surfing in front of some of the best surfers in South Africa um, on a totally new coastline. And, you know, he probably didn't even think he could ride a surfboard a few weeks ago. So that's, yeah, it's awesome. The good news has arrived home before Liko. His mum and the neighbours are excited he's going to represent the township. How proud are you of, of Liko? Oh, I'm very proud and I'm very happy. Why is that? Because my son is a champ and I am now a celebrant. Liko's mum has never seen him surf and worries about him going in the water. What did you think when Liko said to you, Mama, I, w I want to do surfing? I was scared. You were scared? Yes. Why was that? Because he's having a, in the sea and he's a, a shark there. And the sharks, you were worried? So uh, Liko's going to go in a competition on the weekend. What do you think about that? I'm going to be there. You're going to be there? Yes, I'm proud. Oh, fantastic. Do you think he can win? I sure. You're confident? Mm. <laughs> Liko, um, what do you think about going in the competition on the weekend? What, what are you thinking about? Gonna win. You're gonna win? Yes. How win. do you think you're gonna win this competition? Going to save for pity this Up. Up. More powers. Up. <laughs> 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 Excitement is building. The young surfers from Waves for Change can't wait to take on competitors from other townships around the Cape. A lot of these kids live in tiny one-room shacks in the township, so coming out here to the surf is one of the few chances they get to be alone, to have some personal space. And that's why surfing gives them such a strong sense of freedom. The coaches are encouraging the kids to be the best they can be. You got it! Positive reinforcement is often lacking at home and school. It's very hard to achieve in other environments. So even in the ocean, it's something, it's, it's a new place for them. And then that person will take it back to the community, apply it to his lifestyle. A pitch as a coach is a great man. He's really motivated me a lot. And someday I want to be up there like him. I want to be the coach that will talk with the kids. I want to become that coach that the kid can trust and can share anything to me so that I can help where I can help. This is the day the kids have been waiting for. They're on their way to the surfing contest on the other side of Cape Town. First, very, very first time entering a competition and especially representing the community that we're from, the township in Marcy. It puts us on the map so that everyone can know not only by bad stories but by knowing that there's surfers from there as well. Liko hasn't slept much, he's so excited. His mum is here to see him in the water for the first time. The feeling to Gonna win this wave, gonna catch. Is my coach that is saying me, gonna win this, gonna feel it. We've got white team, that's way for change, for sure. And then we've got blue team, yellow and pink. I think we're gonna win. Yeah, we're gonna because win. Because I'm, 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 I'm proud <laughs> of our youngsters there. Time for Liko to take on the surf at Big Bay. 
the kids all need to catch a wave, paddle back in and tag their teammate. Finds out it's harder than it looks. doesn't make the final, but there's still lots to celebrate. Like, you did everything right, but it's just that it's not just a free save, it's a competition. This is the first time many of the kids have been to this part of Cape Town. It's a special place. Just beyond the surf break, you can see Robben Island, where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned. I mean, Nelson Mandela was there, gave us freedom. Like, someone said, surfing is freedom. And then today we just experienced that. But beneath the excitement, reality is never far away. 13-year-old Rabia is putting on a brave face. Last night, a robber broke into her shack and put a knife to her throat just so he could steal a television. He had a long knife on him, a weapon. And they said, if, we, if me, they told me and my mom, if we're going to make a sound and he's going to kill us. So I was terrified. How scary was that for you? I have to say, I doubted you guys, but you can do yeah, it. Yeah, it like, you know, like, it was really, it was torturing us, it's like, it, like, it was torturing us. And I didn't feel like, I was in a cry. It was horrible. How do you feel today, now that you're down at the beach? I feel okay. I feel excited. Like we just need as adults to look after the young ones and we need to look after the next generation to invest positive change because who's going to look after them when we're gone? The children are already learning to find their own way. As the Cape Town weather closes in, the going gets tougher. The kids are full of hope and determination. It's really important. I mean, one of the biggest indicators of, of, of mental health, of mental wellbeing, is, is feelings of hope. So if you can ignite that and then you can support that, um, that's really important. Non Nedo is leading by example. She's now one of the coaches at Waves for Change. She wants to repay the encouragement and kindness she's received from her surfing mentors. I hope for the future to become a social worker, to work with the kids, and also to become a pro surfer and travel. In the space of a generation, young black South Africans have gone from being banned on many beaches to taking on the world. One, two, three. Do you think you can reach your dreams? Someday I, I think I can. I want to. And I hope that one day I will reach my dreams. Still be yours, baby, when I start.